<laughs> and um, as usual, we are going to ask you three small questions. And I think the first one is uh, comes from the USA, and it's a bit about USA and climate legislation and everything. So I'm Josh, and uh, I live in the States. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, so we've got a big effort trying to trying to draw attention to um, what's happening here. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing, and we're having a really hard time uh, competing with. Um, coverage of the oil spill and the Gulf of Mexico and, and I, maybe that's the most important thing that, that there's a focus on domestic issues. Um, but you know it's bigger than just the, the US spill, it's, it's an international problem we see in Nigeria and lots of other places. Um, so in, in light of that I guess, do you think that countries are addressing um, issues like what's happening in the Gulf adequately and what, what more they could do to sort of prevent disaster in the future? maybe here, tying these things together. Um, we don't hear too much about, about the spill. We're having a struggle sort of connecting it, unfortunately. Um, just wondering if you had any thoughts. Um, well, I, my, my question back, I think, is, would be who do you want to be competing with? Because we I don't really want to, I guess we don't want to compete. We just want to make it a, 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 a part of this really important story about how this is, this is, um, this is why we should focus on what's happening here as well. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think also the juxtaposition of, of the urgency of the oil spill. We have mm -hmm. you know, oil still gushing into the Gulf, and it's becoming an international problem. And it's an urgent, urgent problem that we're seeing. Um, but the urgency isn't necessarily, we're not feeling it here. So we're just wondering, what, what can countries do better um, to prevent these kinds of disasters from happening? In, in this process? Um, I've actually managed to get about halfway through the first sentence, so let me... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where I left off. Sorry. Um, I, I think that, that in the United States you have, and in many other places, you have a, a much more fundamental problem of people calling the climate science into question. Um, that's partly, I think, a result of, of eight years of no information or, or disinformation on climate change. Um, it's a result of the fact that the scientific findings are being called into question. And what, what I would see as a first priority is getting people to understand domestically what the potential implications of, of climate change are. Uh, I mean, there's some really interesting stuff that's been done by EPA and others on, on the impacts uh, in the US climate change and uh, building that public understanding I think is a sort of essential first layer to make an advance of, of any kind. Um, I, I think that the second layer for me is explaining to people that if you want to avoid the impacts of climate change but at the same time safeguard economic growth that it has to be green growth, that that is the only way forward and the the third layer for me would be to explain that by doing that, you can also decrease oil dependence and um, you know avoid incidents like the one that's happening uh, in, in the Gulf of Mexico. I I would also I mean I think the 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 big issue um, in in the case of the Gulf of Mexico is the fact that um, international or, or oil exploration at sea is not properly regulated and the fact that you know, no, basically um, the oil industry has been given a carte blanche to do what it wants, especially in international waters. So the challenge I think, the climate or the relation with climate aside, is, is to work on better regulation for international uh, oil exploration in the context of a realization that, that green goes in a different direction. Thanks. I think the second question is not a question, it's kind of a quick Stay. game. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Anna is going to explain you. And after that, I think we should do our kind of front table to, do, to say where we come from. But um, yeah, we thought it'd be nice to play one word association. <laughs> so I say one word and you have to say one word back. <laughs> um, just a few quick ones. <laughs> so maybe the first one should be Bon. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick association. Yeah. Quick association. The first one that popped in my mind was Marie Team. <laughs> um, 
Copenhagen. Um, yeah. Disaster. <laughs> Cancun. Promising. And brackets. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> Thanks. Oh yeah, how about trackers? Uh, more of them. Great. <laughs> <laughs> And I think the probably last question because we just have 15 minutes. It's um, what is your worst and what is your best memory in this process of negotiation as a executive secretary of the convention? Um, they're, they're together. I mean, my, my worst m memory is when in Bali negotiations seem to be breaking down to get the Bali mandate. Adopted, and my best moment was when that mandate was adopted. Everything in the same conference. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in the same half hour. <laughs> and after that, a very important moment in your life of executive secretary in Copenhagen, perhaps. Um, well, I think in 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 political terms. Uh, Copenhagen was actually a very important moment in time uh, because of the huge public attention that it attracted, because it did bring together 120 heads of states and government, and because many of the key political issues were at least addressed in, uh, in the Copenhagen Accord. So even though it didn't, I mean, many people were expecting many different things from Copenhagen. Some were expecting a legally binding treaty. Uh, they didn't get that. Uh, it's not what I was expecting. Some were expecting a package of implementation decisions, that's what I was hoping for, we didn't get that uh, either. But I do believe that the Copenhagen Accord is an important tool that we can use to advance the negotiations, providing we use it intelligently. So getting that, uh, uh, getting that to where it is now was, I think, important. Okay. I've got one last question. As you can see, we've actually like run out of t-shirts, so perhaps we might need to claim some of the ones back. We've given you over the years. <laughs> <laughs> now you have resigned your position as tea tracker. <laughs> so now you want my t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Do I have to wash them first? <laughs> okay, so perhaps should we do a quick round table just to do where we come from? I'm Sonal, I'm from New York, Brooklyn. Uh, from France, I think I'm here. Juliana from Brazil. Anna from the UK. No, Josh from San Francisco. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Mila from India. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam from the UK.